Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Recently I've seen quite the commotion about these pre-made fire alarm boards. Uh, I've seen a couple of them and the concept is basically the same. There's a pull station and a fire alarm mounted to a piece of wood. Um, and I've seen sellers charge as high as $500 for one of these, which is absolutely astronomical for what you're getting. It's really not worth that much. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make one of these yourself. Uh, and hopefully along the way, you can save some money and also learn something with your kid or whoever you're making this with. So let's go ahead and get started. Start by finding a piece of wood. You can really use whatever wood you want, whether that's a two by four, a piece of plywood, an old pallet, or even some old furniture that you take apart, but you just need a piece of wood. Once you've gotten your wood picked out, you don't have to cut it at all. However, if you have the tools to do so, you can go ahead and cut it. If you're buying wood at a home center like Home Depot or Lowe's, you can actually ask an associate to cut it for you and they'll do that for you free of charge. Now you're gonna want some electrical boxes. You're gonna want a single gang box for your pull station. And then for your notification appliance, you're gonna want a four by four square box. These boxes will accommodate pretty much all notification appliances. Depending on which devices you're gonna be using, however, you might want the extra deep version because some devices have a larger back. For example, today I'm gonna to be using this, which is flat on the back, so this one will be fine. However, for some devices, such as this one right here, there's a large backside and it would not fit in something like this. So that's something to be aware of. If you'd like to be extra fancy, you can go ahead and paint your box red with a can of spray paint. These are just a few dollars. So this is a cool optional touch. Now you're gonna go ahead and just map out where you want your stuff to be. Generally, you want your pull station at the bottom and then device on the top. You can go ahead and punch out a knockout in the back if your box hasn't already had that punched out. And then you can go ahead and put the box onto the surface and just mark a couple holes like so. Now you're gonna get a drill of any kind with a bit and then go ahead and drill through for your wire. Now just go ahead and drive in a couple short screws. You just wanna make sure the screws aren't poking through the other side just as a basic safety precaution. You're of course gonna need a power supply, so go ahead and find yourself one of these transformers. This particular one puts out 24 volts DC, which is perfect because most devices do run off of that. But make sure to check your particular device to make sure that the power rating is correct. You can see this one is 20 to 30 volts, which 24 volts DC will be perfect for that. Go ahead and just clip off the end of whatever's there and then go ahead and strip back these two ends. The one with the white strips going along it, it's hard to see, but there's little white lines. That's your positive, so just make a mental note of that, but just go ahead and strip the cable ends. Go ahead and feed this to your pull station first. So put that in here. And then a good little tip is, because this might get pulled on, um, and that might be a little bit of a problem, just put the wire in a little bit of a knot like this to prevent it from getting pulled out. Now just find another piece of wire. This is just some scrap speaker wire that I found a while ago. So just feed that into the pull station too. There we go. And then you can do the same thing with the knot to prevent this wire from getting pulled out. You can use really any wire you want to. You can use bell wire, which is usually pretty cheap if you want fire alarm wire, but really any copper wire will be sufficient. Again, you're gonna wanna just strip this, so just Remove the insulation, and then that's good. Now you're going to go ahead and join the two negative wires together. The negative wires are either the one that's black or the one that's not uh, covered in this white stripe. You can use really a lot of different things to splice two wires together. You can use a wire nut. Really, you can just twist them together and tape them because this is such low voltage. But I really do like using these Wago connectors because they're just easily customizable. So you just put this in, put that tab down, then put the other lead in and then put that tab down and this really does make a nice secure connection and it's nice because down the road if you want to undo these you can just pull this tab up and remove your undamaged wire so so this wire is going to go to your notification appliance so just cut a decent amount you can see that what we've created is really just a very simple circuit power comes in through here uh, right here, we've broken the connection, but as the pull station is activated, the two wires will touch, and then power will flow to the device. 
but that's basically the concept of how this works. So now you can go ahead and tuck these wires back in the box. Those aren't really what you're wiring. And then this will go to your pull station. So I just have this BG12 here, really simple generic pull station. So just go ahead and put one wire under one terminal and then tighten down that screw terminal. Go ahead and fasten this down to the box. Again, you're just gonna put two screws in and then you should be all set. We're almost done here. Now all you have to do is strip the wires for your notification appliance like this. So just go ahead and put the negative wire under the negative terminal, like so. Then put the positive wire under the positive terminal. There you go. So now just put the device on and screw it down. If you're using power tools, you got to be really careful because um, you can really easily just damage the plastic housing. But you can see we're basically done here. This is our fire alarm board that took not really long at all to make. Here it is. Let's go ahead and plug it in and test it. Three, two, one. That's that. You can see it does pretty much what a fire alarm board would be expected to do. If you want to enhance this a little bit, make the back look a little tidier, you could go ahead and staple down these wires. There's a few different ways you could do that. You use some of these little cable, st cable staples and just pound that in. Or if you have a little staple gun, you can just shoot a couple in. But honestly, this is probably fine because no one's looking at the back. Another enhancement you could do is add a, um, a couple hooks on the back or a hanging place so you can put this on the wall like such um, this would be something pretty neat but other than that if you want to just lean this against something and just have it there it is so how much does this cost to make i'm sure that's the question that's going through your mind right now and the real simple answer is for me zero dollars and zero cents i literally made this in about 30 minutes with nothing that i had to buy everything i used in this project i already had but i'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this as if i didn't have any materials and then we'll go ahead and do a cost breakdown in terms of wood you would probably want a piece of plywood like this so this is a two by four sheet and it's 35 dollars but for the amount of plywood we'd be using in this project you can make like five or six pieces with this one piece of wood so electrical boxes are really cheap both boxes were under two dollars each with one being 188 and the other being 146. so far we're only at 38 dollars but let's go ahead and throw in some things that you probably already had at home Bell wire is about 29 cents a foot, and we used about two feet, so that's 58 cents. Assuming you have absolutely no screws in your house, $1.38 will get you a 10 pack of screws. Now let's suppose you don't have any fire alarms and you have to buy those too. A pull station is about $25. There's a bunch of different models for sale, but generally you can get one for under $25. And a horn strobe is $23. That brings our total to $87, and that's after buying a bunch of unnecessary things that you probably already own. Let's suppose you don't have a wall adapter. You can find one on eBay for $11.49. At this point, our total is still under $100. Now let's get a little crazier and pretend that we don't have any tools at home. So we're gonna add in a basic drill and screwdriver. This cheap drill is $15 at Harbor Freight, and this screwdriver is $2.29, and it has an exchangeable tip. And now let's say you need some drill bits. This set here is $6.99. And now our total is $122. And that's after buying the power supply, screws, a screwdriver, a drill, like five times the wood you're going to need, the fire alarm devices themselves, the electrical boxes, the wire, and basically anything you would need. Well guys, thank you for watching this video. Like I said, this project is about 122 if you buy literally everything. But if you already have some basic tools at home and you don't have to buy everything, you could definitely throw one of these together for under $50. Um, this is also a really simple project to do. It's not overly complicated. Um, definitely any beginners who are interested in building things could make one of these themselves. Um, if you have a kid who's interested in fire alarms or something like that, this would be an excellent gift to get them. Um, or you could build it with them, anything like that. As long as whoever's getting it is happy and you don't spend hundreds of dollars on it, then I'd consider that a win. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy, and good luck building.